Hey everyone, let's talk about the idea of multiple reactions happening at the same time. So here's the deal. Um, we know that if we put a bunch of stuff into a reactor, uh, we don't actually get to control that only exactly the reaction we want happens. Well, we do a little bit, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, pretty much any of the things that might happen in our reaction can. All of this stuff, all of the ways things might combine, we can't just say only one reaction is ever happening. It's always a good idea to assume that everything, at least before you have done careful design, is a multi-reaction system. And you say, well, that's great. Um, I know how to deal with one reaction, right? With one reaction, I've got uh, Ka, which I do uh, by getting e to the negative delta G over RT and uh, setting that equal to something that I've assumed about uh, the activity raised to each new. Okay, so that's, that's the normal course of events with just one reaction. Uh, so it's actually pretty straightforward to do multiple reactions. And how you do multiple reactions is each reaction that is happening in the same place at the same time gets its own Ka and uh, gets its own buried there inside that activity, uh, has its own Xi. So if you have a system where there might be three or four simultaneous reactions, you have to write expressions for Ka1, Ka2, Ka3, Ka4, and you're using C2, C3, C4, in addition to your original C. And you have to solve all these, solve simultaneously. And it's a pretty safe bet that things with larger Ks uh, will tend to be the reactions we see more prominently occurring uh, than the ones with the smaller Ks. But because, uh, say, for example, in our situation, maybe reaction three uses the uh, products from reacted reaction one, uh, initially reaction three can't happen at all until reaction one has happened, but as reaction one happens, its products don't accumulate because they're instantly consumed by reaction three, which drives reaction one forward uh, more than it would have otherwise. So some really interesting um, stuff can happen here. And in fact, this is part of the way that uh, if you go look at biological systems where there's chains of reactions that, that are linked to each other, this is part of how uh, all of that works. Now, in the real world, if you're building a reactor and you really want some reactions to occur and other ones not to occur, what you do is you add a catalyst. Now, a catalyst does not change Ka. It has no impact, right? So catalyst, no impact on equilibrium. Um, a catalyst changes rate, changes speed. And uh, you see what happens when you add then the catalyst for a particular reaction, that reaction happens more quickly than uh, the other reactions that might also be occurring. And so uh, it ends up being the prominent product that is in that given reactor. So that's part of how we set up reactors to do what we want. And it is absolutely how, for example, the cells in your body are set up to do uh, what they've got to do. And this is all a little esoteric, so I invite you to proceed to the next video, which has a specific example in it.